This is Premier Dynamics podcast number 37. And today we're talking about a really interesting topic that I've never thought about before. And that is the permeability of a ski outfit and its effects on your ability to jump far. So we all know that um, Olympic sport where you go, no, it's not just Olympic sport, but a sport in general where you go down the ramp and then you fly really far. So we're looking at that today and how the clothing, the permeability of that clothing affects how far they can actually travel. Let me make this window a little bit bigger for you as well. Here we go. And the paper we're looking at is called Flow Behavior Caused by Air Permeability of Ski Jumping Suit Fabric. It's an open access paper, so you can access it in the link in the uh, description. And this is quite an interesting field. It hasn't really had much research on it, but these people who researched it here, they found some really interesting results and the fact that permeability can actually greatly improve the, um, the distance that you should be able to go. And we're going to talk about why that is. So just an overall picture of why there's general physics that happens. So the permeability, that means how much air or any fluid can go through a surface. And the greater the permeability, the more fluid can go through, in this case, air. And so the air, instead of hitting the surface and then flowing around, can go through a little bit and then come out in different areas. And that affects the flow physics, how the flow moves around an object and then whether it will stay attached or not. And this is what they're looking at in this paper. So they start off saying that ski jumping is a competitive event and there are various factors that affect uh, your scoring. So how far you fly, your posture of your arms and your legs, the ski position during the flight and when you land, as well as um, they call it the style. And then that ranking determines how, how well you do. So whether you win or not. And obviously you want to get as far as possible and land as well as possible to get as many points as possible and then win if possible. So there's lots of possibilities going on here and hopefully all of them will pay off. So let's move on. <laughs> as a result, the aerodynamic characteristics of the ski wear greatly affect the outcome of the ski. Um, jumping competition. So if you look at these competitions, the skiers are often in these very tight outfits. They don't have all this baggy, um, like Gore-Tex kind of material. Like if you look at a, a snowboarding event or um, moguls with skis or whatever, uh, they're usually in very baggy clothing and that's going to capture the air. Now in ski jumping, you want to go as fast as possible down the ramp and then so you can get as much speed as possible to jump off as far as you can. And also through the through the flight, you don't want to have as that much drag. The less drag you can have, the further you'll go. And also, you can also produce more lift by not having this baggy, um, these baggy outfits if you position yourself properly. So a, this is a very aerodynamic sport, which is why it's interesting to look at this subject. And then they said that there are also um, some rules based on the type of clothing that you can wear. For example. Um, they have a particular regulation on how much um, permeability your suit can have. So it can't have less than 40 liters per square meter per second. So what this means is if you have a whatever piece of clothing you have, a regular ski jacket is probably going to be um, less than that because it's Gore-Tex. Well, I guess Gore-Tex is better. So a cheap ski jacket will be worse than this, but a Gore-Tex will probably be better because Gore-Tex lets air in and, and blah, 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 whatever. Um, but you can't go less than 40 liters per meter squared per second of a fluid, in particular water, at a pressure of 98 pascals going through your clothing because then it's considered um, kind of cheating in the sport. That's the rule that they have. So that's a lower limit. And they say that although in general fabric with lower permeability is considered to be advantageous, the relationship between air flow rate and the aerodynamic characteristics of a suit has not been fully elucidated and further research is needed. You go on and say no studies have been conducted on the effect of the airflow rate through the fabric on the aerodynamics and the stall characteristics of an elliptical cylinder. So they're using an elliptical cylinder here to approximate just a, a general body instead of a human because this is an initial investigation. And this is a good way of doing it. If you want to go to a very um, high fidelity model to begin with, that's going to come at a lot of costs and we don't really know whether it's going to be worth it or not. So having an initial investigation is a good way about doing your aerodynamic experiments for and then research for, for those listening. So they say, for the, therefore, in this study, they're looking at a wind tunnel. They have an elliptical cylinder in a in clothing of different air permeabilities, and they're looking at the lift and drag, and they're looking at also some flow visualization using smoke wires. For those of you who don't know what smoke wires are, 
they are um, just like, you know, in a nightclub or whatever, where they have smoke. It's kind of like that, where you're just producing this smoke into the wind tunnel. It's almost the quintessential aerodynamic uh, flow visualization that you see on ads and that you have a car in a wind tunnel and there's smoke going over the top. They're doing that kind of thing here. And they get into their methods. So they talk about their figure. So figure one shows a ski jumping suit with whose fabric is composed of three layers, the outer layer, inside layer, and lining layer. The air permeability of the ski jumping suit can be adjusted by changing the area and the number of the holes in the middle layer of the fabric. So let's have a look at this. So you have the outside fabric, the inside fabric, and then the one in the middle is this kind of spongy fabric, which has holes in it. They can increase these hole sizes to get more permeability or place them differently. And as a result, they're going to test four different types of permeabilities, case zero, one, two, and three. And they all go from case zero means that the um, there was no there were no holes, so there was no permeability, zero porosity. And then case three is the upper limit, so there's the maximum amount of permeability or porosity. So in a ski jumping event, case zero would be not allowed because it's below the 40 liters per meter squared per second limit. Now, one important thing to note is that none of these different porosities changed the outside surface um, of this material, which is important. If you change the outside surface, that's going to change the geometry. So you're not just looking at the permeability, you're looking at geometry. But in this case, they kept it constant, which is good. They're just looking at permeability here. And then they have a figure two, which shows a schematic of the fabric clothed elliptical, elliptic cylinder. So for those of you just listening to this, it's a effectively a metal cylinder, which is 100 millimeters high, high, and the major axis is 75 millimeters. The minor axis is 45 millimeters. So the major axis is the, the longer one. And it just has this piece of fabric around, wrapped around. And the free stream velocity was 20 meters per second, which is apparently the, um, the typical takeoff speed for a large hill ski jump which gives a Reynolds number of 100,000 for this uh, cylinder. And interestingly as well, they also looked at changing the angle of the cylinder. So they have the major axis, which is the long one. So the, that's where the cylinder is going to be pointiest. The, the um, angle between that line and the free stream is the angle of attack. And so they, they put this cylinder at different angles of attack with these different permeabilities of these fabrics to determine what the the lift and drag were at these different angles of attack. So that's, that's quite interesting. Obviously with the ski jump, the jumper is not at one angle of attack the entire ski jump. You have the takeoff and then the landing. So there, there are different angles of attack there. So this is a good little um, model for that, I guess. And let's just go quickly through the permeability of the different cases. So case zero, as we said, was zero liters per meter squared per second. Case one was 43.4. So that comes just within so it's just good for regulation. So you can use it it's above the limit just. Case two was 58.2 and case three was 65.8. So all three cases were significantly greater than the completely closed case. And now they move on to the aerodynamic performance. So the juicy part. Before we go any further, just make sure to check out everything at Primax to check out the interpretation we do. We have the atmosphere hall that accurately measures the uh, barometric pressure, the temperature and the humidity in your experiment so you know what the density of your air is as well as anything else that these parameters affect in your experiments. So that means your results are going to be far more accurate and when you want to use these results to um, validate your CFD you're now actually going to have a much better idea as to what your density is so then you can set the same density in your CFD and validate your CFD much easier. We also have make traverses and PIV systems, so check them out. We also do courses, we do CFD, theoretical and experimental, kind of like this, so you can uh, learn more about this kind of stuff and get better. We also have the International Aerodynamics Conference, it's on every year, so check that out, links in the description. So let's move on to the aerodynamic performance of these cylinders with these different permeabilities, the fabrics at least, around them, not the actual cylinders, the cylinders were solid. So first of all, they say the lift coefficients, first the angles of attack, were plotted in figure six. And in figure six, we see that indeed we do have the, these um, lift coefficients as they promised, which is good. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what we can see is up, up to about 10 degrees, the lift coefficient for the completely um, 
for case zero. So no permeability is actually better than any of the other cases. However, for case three and case one, the maximum lift coefficient a greater maximum lift coefficients they're by about 20% than the other two. Another interesting thing is that the, the cylinder has a very sharp stall. So if you look at it, if you think of a wing, for those of you just listening to this, if you look, think about that lift curve slope, you usually get a fairly sharp stall where you, you, know, you get a, a drop in, a sudden drop in lift coefficient at a certain angle of attack. Here, the lift coefficient goes from 1.1 or 1.3 to almost zero within a few degrees. So this is very um, dramatic stall happening. And then it kind of recovers. Now, what they say is, it was found that the lift coefficient increased with an increasing angle of attack for all cases before stall occurred, which is true. It went fairly linearly. The stall was delayed by the fabrics with higher permeabilities, cases two and cases three. I guess that's true. So they, they were delayed by, case two was about two, maybe a degree. Case three was about three degrees. And case three had the highest lift at the high angle of attack. So at the, just before stall. The maximum lift coefficient was also higher in case three than in other cases. They also found that um, the drag coefficient decreased with an increase in the air permeability of the fabric. The drag coefficients obtained for case three were the lowest value among all cases. So let's look at this graph here. So that's true, pretty much across the entire angle attack range, case three has the lowest drag and case zero has pretty much a greater drag definitely before stall and even after the stall, it's pretty crappy. Whereas case three is quite good. It's about a 10% reduction, maybe 15% reduction across the entire angle attack range. And then they talked about the lift to drag ratio. So the lift to drag ratio is often a measure of the efficiency of something. So the higher this value, the more efficient your object is. That means you're producing more lift and or less drag. And I looked at they said the drag ratio for case three was improved at high angles of attack in contrast to the original case. Therefore, it is deduced that the flight distance can be extended by wearing a ski jumping suit made of a fabric with a high permeability because the ski jumpers fly in a stall condition after take. Oh, this is interesting. I just, I, I read this, but I didn't take this in the first time. Now, is they're saying the ski jumpers fly in a stall condition after taking off into the air. Well, wow. so that means the entire time that they're flying through the air, they're not really producing that much lift. It's really a case of trying to reduce the drag as much as possible so they can go far. It's not really about trying to produce any lift. So they're in a stall pattern the entire time. So that's interesting. And now they talk about why case three was so good, in particular compared to case zero, which is no permeability. To do that, they introduced smoke into the, into the system. And they said that to figure out why case three was so much better, they looked at the strength of the surface flow was evaluated using the light reflection from the smoke wire and the brightness of the smoke reflection was measured by the illumination ratio. So this was the illumination of the smoke um, at two different points to see um, how much flow was actually going through. Now, the reason why this works is because smoke often reflects light. So if you put in a laser or even just regular light, you'll be able to see it. Now, one thing to note is that they're using the illuminations of this smoke, but I'm not sure how consistent the smoke coming out of the smoke wire was. I'm assuming it's fairly consistent, but I don't know. And also um, how linear this reflection is with increasing um, smoke density. But what they found was We'll get into a bit in a second, but they found that there was a massive difference. So even though these errors are probably not going to eclipse this difference and what they found is going to be quite true. So they said figure 10, for those of you playing at home. No, let's look at figure nine first. They want to jump to figure nine, here we go. We can see in figure nine that we have a cylinder. On the left, we have case zero, which is zero permeability, case three, which is high permeability. And there's simply far less smoke that you can see over the surface of the cylinder. The reason why is because the smoke goes into the fabric and then it comes out somewhere at the back. And what they, they say is that this then reduces the, obviously the wake size, because you have a bit more um, high energy flow coming into the wake. Whereas if you had um, no permeability, you wouldn't have that. So you can kind of think of this as 
akin to wing slots. So in, in quite a few podcasts that we do about um, wings, we cover what wing slots do. So if you want to learn a lot about them, check those podcasts out. I'm just going to go through it briefly here. So wing slots are usually used on wings to re-energize a flow to delay stall. What happens is a flow goes over a curved surface, for example, a wing or a cylinder, and it will start to accelerate, then decelerate due to adverse pressure gradient. Once it decelerates to a certain amount, it will detach. Now you want to stop that, and you can stop that by introducing high energy flow, and you can do that by softening high energy flow from one region, so high moving flow, fast moving flow, and injecting it into this region. And this is kind of what this does. So it's akin to a slotted wing in that sense. Then they looked at figure 14, where the elliptical cylinder with the um, zero porosity fabric had stalled, but the one with um, high porosity, so case three, had not stalled yet. Let's see what the, at this angle attack, Oh, no, the K0 hadn't stalled yet, but it was on its way, and K3 definitely didn't stall yet. We can see that there's a lot more flow coming through near the back, and the wake is a lot more illuminated and even faster moving, it seems. I mean, I can't tell too much, but it does seem to be like that. So, in conclusion, they said that using uh, this high, high permeability, the stall angle increased for these cylinders, which approximate jumpers, with high air permeability, the drag coefficient decreased because the wake is smaller, you have higher fluid, higher faster moving fluid in the wake. So that's going to help with that, um, getting rid of that wake and equalizing that pressure, uh, that pressure difference front to back. Just one thing I'd, I should probably say on that. So you illuminate that a little bit more. Um, for an object like this, a cylinder, the major component of drag is the pressure drag. And the pressure drag is just the difference between pressures on the front and back surface of an object. The greater that pressure difference, the greater the pressure drag. And the reason why that is because this is called a bluff body, and bluff body is typically characterized by that kind of flow. So by injecting um, high momentum flow into this region, you can reduce this wake size and reduce that pressure difference and reduce the pressure drag, which is the main component of drag. That's why the drag coefficient drops with increasing air permeability. Finally, they say, for the fabrics with high air permeabilities, the smoke flow permeated the surface of the elliptical elliptic cylinder through the fabric and then flowed out into the separated region through the fabric again. And therefore, the stool characteristics were affected by the air permeabilities of the fabrics. So that's the end of this podcast. Make sure to like, subscribe, and tell us what uh, you thought of it because this was quite an interesting case, I thought. Link, um, put your comments below. Check out Earthenet Prayer Ranks. Check out the introduction we do. Check out the courses we put on and check out the comments we put on every year. Links in the description. And see you in the next podcast. Peace out, amigos.